What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Thank God it's the weekend. Um, hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH. Listen, I'm glad Gregory told Finn the same thing. I've been saying it. Laura told him. Leave it alone. Because <laughs> you know Finn is chomping at the bit to jump in and save Elizabeth. To do whatever he can to save her. And all he needs to do if he really wants to help her is just do what she asked him to do. You know, look out for the boys. Keep supporting her from afar. Just let her do this on her own. You know what I mean? And Gregory felt it He because he knows his son. You know, when people tell Finn to just leave something alone, he's not going to leave it alone. He's going to jump in and try to be, you know, everybody's hero and try to save the day. And I'm glad Gregory told him, let it go. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't call her parents. Don't try to play hero. Just do what she asked you to do. You know, take care of yourself. Take care of the boys. Violet. Let Leave this to her. And I do agree because I feel like him calling her parents would make matters worse. You know, the, she hasn't seen these people in, what, tw over 20 years? She hasn't seen these people in a long time. Haven't spoke to them in a long time. You know what I mean? That's a very fragile situation, and I feel like Finn would make things worse if he did make that call. He would not only make things worse for her, but for his relationship with her, because, you know, she's probably going to flip out on him. I know I would. You know, if I tell you to butt out and leave it alone, that's just what the hell I mean. So I'm glad. Hopefully he listens to what Gregory had to say, because Laura told him the same exact thing. So if Laura's telling you this, then you really need to heed that warning and just, you know, let it go and go, go sit down. <laughs> you know um i'm glad laura knocked some sense in the camera and just let him know like listen don't put your life on hold like yeah there's a lot going on you know with his mother being in shady brook and he got work and you know then on top of that you got this whole esme trina spencer mess going on so cameron's mind is all over the place right now i i can feel him on that and that's why he needs a vacation take the camping trip you know what I'm saying? It'd get his mind off of stuff. You know, he could help his little brothers get their mind off of things. You know, and I'm glad Laura told him that. Don't put your life on hold just because of something that your mother going through. You know, because even Liz didn't want him to do that. And she felt like that's what the boys were doing. I definitely feel like he should go on that camping trip. And I'm glad he did decide to go because he needs the break. And of course, Spencer comes in at the most inopportune moment to talk about he's quitting. See? People get some money, act brand new. <laughs> Spencer said, I got my check. I'm going. Spencer was not playing. He said, listen, I get my $10,000 a week. And I ain't like how Spencer tried to shoo Laura away. I ain't like that. Talking about, oh, I need to talk to you alone. Because he told me, oh, I got big news. And Laura said, what's this news? He told me, oh, I need to talk to Cam alone. You're not going to play Laura like that. That's what we not going to do, little boy. You're not going to play the queen like that. And I'm glad Cameron put him in his place and said, listen, whatever you can say to me, you can say in front of our grandmother. Chop, chop. Say it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to dismiss her. And this ain't the first time Spencer has tried to do that. And I remember Laura called him out on that the first time. He tried to dismiss her and stuff. No, you're not going to do that. You're not. Because just because you think you're legally grown, you can still get your ass whooped. I'm just saying. You ain't that grown to get a skillet upside your head. <laughs> just say it. Like, you're not going to keep trying to dismiss her. You better go calm all that down. Um, so now he wants to sit here and quit the diner and stuff like that. And Spencer and Cameron said, listen, you were supposed to work tonight and I got to go. So I need you to do at least one more shift. And technically I'm like, fool, you supposed to get him at least a two week notice, not a five minute notice. Like, damn. So rude and inconsiderate. You can at least get that boy a, a two week notice and at least finished out two weeks at the very least. I mean, granted, he don't need the money right now, but still we'll finish out your tenure. Little fool. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, um, listen, Ava is dangling that trust fund like a carrot right about now because <laughs> she wanted some answers from Mr. Spencer. She said, listen, tell me the truth about what's going on. What, what are you not telling me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is going on? What game are you trying to play with Esme and with Trina? Like, what are you up to? And he didn't want to say, she said, listen, if you don't tell me what the hell is going on, she was like, I will take that trust fund back so fast. I'm like, Ava, don't don't start. <laughs> Listen, I love me some Ava, but I'm like, Ava, you cannot keep dangling that trust fund in front of that boy face like that. Come on now. 
Like, that ain't even right, even though he is a spoiled ass, but still, it's like, you know, you, you gave him the ground rules already for the trust. You don't need to be adding more when you feel like it. That ain't right. I'm just saying. Like, come on now. But I totally understand why she wanted answers, because it pertains to Trina. She's not about to continue to sit back and let Trina continue to get played, you know, and get hurt. She's not about to let that happen, so I understand why she wanted to know. Um... Esme was working my nerve a little bit with Nicholas. She's sitting there talking about, oh, I won't tell Ava that we made love. I wish people would stop saying make love. Because no, y'all did not make love. Y'all fucked. There's a big difference between having sex and making love. Making love is very different from fucking. It's very different. Fucking is more wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. There's no passion to it, no nothing. Y'all did not make love. Stop saying that. Because for one, he don't love you. You damn sure don't love him, so stop it. But, um... You know, she's sitting there hugging him and stuff. I, I'm starting to feel like Nicholas is feeling her, though. I'm starting to feel that way. I am starting to feel like he is loving this little this little teeny bopper over here. Because she's a child to him. Like, Nicholas is, what, 40? Like, that's a child. Even though she's legally an adult, it's like, still, compared to Nicholas, he's been with grown-ass women. You know what I mean? Like, hell, he's married to a fully grown-ass woman. It's like, what you doing with this little thing? Like, what she could teach you. You know what I'm saying? Because it don't matter what age Ava at. Ava's still a freak in them sheets, so. <laughs> y'all be over there playing bondage and shit, so clearly y'all getting in on a regular. Well, before the problems hit. Um, So he comes up in the living room and stuff like that. Mind you, Ava immediately smells the scent of Esme on him. She was like, why you got Esme scent on you? And so he had to explain that Esme called him outside the foyer and, you know, gave him, him this little pet talk or whatever um, and whatnot. And he started thanking Ava for giving him a second chance. This fool talking about, but I have to give you something, though. She was like, I don't need no more presents. This fool said, I want a divorce. Come again? Nicholas, what the hell are you doing? I wonder what game is he playing? Like, is this, he wants a divorce because he feels guilty? Like, what game is he playing right now? Because before he refused about a divorce. He wouldn't hear of a divorce. I remember when Ava first started mentioning the fact about divorce many moons ago. He was pissed. He didn't want that to happen. You know what I mean? He fought it. Now, all of a sudden, you, oh, I want a divorce. I'm about ready for Ava just to leave this relationship alone. Because it's so toxic. It just screams toxic. Like, she need to leave this alone. Because these cast and I men is just... I'm ready for her to just give him his little divorce. Take whatever money you need to take from him. And when you find out about him at Esme, I hope she slapped the shit out of him. Because he deserve it. Because Nicholas is just irritating my soul right about now. Um, It's just a hot mess. So anyway, moving on from that, Mac and Felicia was at the dog on hospital and Rory pop up with um with Mac. I mean not Mac. Um What's his face? Ryan. I'm starting to forget his name already. Popped up with little Ryan Chamberlain or whatever. So Mac, you know, Felicia and Mac, they wasn't happy to see him, obviously. Um, and Mac was getting all up in his face and stuff like that and I thought it was for real at first because Ryan started screaming in his face and then he started biting his neck <laughs> like he's some damn vampire or something. I'm like, fool, this is not vampire in Port Charles. Go sit down. Biting his neck and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a dream. OK, cool. You know, that's it's, it's pretty much all what was in Ryan's head of what he really wanted to do to Mac. And Mac made it very clear to Rory. He said, listen, make sure that man is under lock and key when he goes in that room. I want guards outside that door. Um, speaking of Mac and Felicia, so they finally started talking about this baby situation and stuff because she was like, you know, she wasn't sweating Ryan. You know what I mean? Like, she was like, we got a beautiful baby on our side and stuff like that. And he was like, Mac was like, listen, we've been dancing around this for weeks. Are you pregnant? <laughs> he was like, are you not? And, um, she was like, no, I'm not pregnant. I figured as much. Um... But I'm glad they, they kind of had that conversation because he asked her. He was like, did you ever regret us not having a child of our own, like biologically? And she said no, because at the end of the day, he helped her. Hell, he raised her children, you know what I'm saying, which is his children. Because I know a lot of people like to say, well, Frisco's the dad. Listen, 
Frisco, in my opinion, is the sperm donor. Mac is the father. Mac was with these kids every day. He raised them kids. That's a father. You know what I'm saying? When you raise children, like you're there for them every day when they're sick, when they're happy, you're celebrating birthdays with them, like you're there for every step of the way. You you are the father. You are the father. You are the mother. You're the parent. The other person ain't nothing but a, 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 a egg donor, or sperm donor, whichever one. You know what I'm saying? That's how I see it. So in my opinion, I always felt like Mac was, you know, their their dad, Georgie and Maxie. That's their dad. You know, and those are his grandchildren. That's how I see it. Um, I think a part of Mac deep down probably would have wondered what it would have been like having a child that looked like him or something. But, you know, I don't think he re I don't think for five minutes, for one minute, I don't think he regrets, you know, raising Maxie and Georgie as his own. I don't believe he regretted it at all i don't think he does i think he loved it but you know you always get that thing in the back of your mind like you know what if you know i think a lot of us play that what if game um but i wouldn't be surprised though if mac and felicia popped up with a child at some point or whatever it ain't never too late modern technology is is making moves nowadays with these ivfs and everything else so you never know um i wouldn't be mad about it so anyway, Ryan was not thrilled about some of what Esme had to tell him because Esme pretty much told him, like, listen, I got, you know, I slept with Nicholas and he was happy that she finally seduced Nicholas. Um, He was hoping that, you know, she would tell him Ava's reaction to it. And he got pissed when Esme said, I didn't tell Ava. He grabbed her so hard. <laughs> like they got a little sick ass father daughter relationship. Like they shit is so sick. Like, you could tell, like, he abusive. Um, because he was, like, literally just applying pressure to her. Um, but Esme, you know what? I can't blame her. She's playing the long game. You know, she's not looking for five minutes of pleasure or five minutes of gratification. That's not what she's looking for. She was like, no, I'm going to play this long game. And I think I have a feeling what that long game is. Why sit here and tell Ava something now when you could dangle it around like a carrot whenever you want to? Makes sense. And I have a feeling she probably going to pop up pregnant. I, I, I'm i being for real, for real. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Esme popped up with a little bundle of joy soon. Because, um, like she said, she's looking out for herself at this point. She's not really worried about Ryan's little plans. You know? You know? She's looking out for her self-interest, which would come with a lot of moolah. I'm just saying. Because if she pop up pregnant, she could dangle that baby like a carrot. Um... Ryan is, you know, he, he just looked like he ain't all that happy. He told me he disappointed in her. I'm like, Ryan, she's not playing by your rules anymore, sir. <laughs> she's playing by her own. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I am so proud of Epiphany, like for taking the MCAT and stuff and Portia's been helping her study and all that. I'm happy for her. You know what I'm saying? Starting this new chapter in her life. I'm thrilled. And now that this whole big secret about Marshall is out, maybe her and Marshall could date, you know? Maybe they could, you know, move forward with that. Because she told Marshall, she said, listen, I was a little angry with you for just up and leaving me, especially after you encouraged me to go after my dreams and stuff. But, you know, he told her, he said, listen, I'm proud of you and I'm back and I'm here to stay. I said, all right, go ahead. I hope they do end up getting together, though, because the meds seem like they working. So I'm happy for her. Um, Curtis, on the one hand, you know, he brought Portia up to speed about what was going on with Marshall and the schizophrenia and stuff. And now he's worried that schizophrenia could be passed down to him through genetics and she told him she was like listen if you want to get a test done or whatever to see if you have the genetic markers for it or whatever you can do that um but he was like he want to talk to marshall first you know to see if that's a you know something he may want to explore or whatever i totally understand why curtis is a little afraid of that you know what i mean because of course a lot of us have relatives that have you know some type of medical issue or whatever so of course we all get nervous because this is stuff that either killed them or, you know, put a big cloud over their life or whatever, or derailed their life in some form or fashion. And we're worried about, you know, what if that happens to us? Like, what if we die from this? Like, what if we catch this or, you know, because it's hereditary or whatever. So I could totally understand his concerns about that. And Portia definitely had concerns. That's why she called the um, genetic specialist herself to make an appointment to ask, you know, some serious questions about it because she's worried. You know what I'm saying? I don't blame her. Oh, I just thought about it. 
I just th I just thought about why she was so worried about. It. She wasn't worried about it because she's dating Curtis. I think she's worried about it for Trina. That's what I think she's worried about. I keep telling y'all, stuff is is starting to add up that Trina has got to be his daughter. Because that secret from the basement, and now she seems way more concerned about this schizophrenia stuff than Curtis is. And I know she not you you wouldn't have that much concern about it over the man that you're dating. You know what I'm saying? You would be a little concerned that he may have the genetics, but she was overly concerned and making an appointment right after he left the room. Why would you do that? I'm starting to think Portia really I'm I'm starting to think Trina really is that man daughter. I believe it now. Because all she told him back then was, well, that's not your daughter. That's not good enough because he never got a DNA test on her. So your word is not good enough for me. It never was. Ever since she told him that, that was never good enough for me. I needed proof. And now I'm starting to believe that is his child. Um, Yeah, yeah. Portia and Curtis ain't long for this world as far as that relationship go. So speaking of Trina, um, you know, she got her report back from the school. Her, the decision that they made. So apparently the school found her guilty of violating their policies and they're going to have a hearing or whatever to determine the punishment for it. It could be expulsion. I feel so bad for her. I feel so bad for Trina. Because now on top of that, all, you know, this trial that's coming up now, she got to deal with possibly being kicked out of school now. Um, and of course, you know, I think I felt like it lit a fire under her ass now that she may be losing, you know, she may be losing out on a good education and stuff. I think it lit a fire under her ass to really go after Esme now, you know, and try to get the dirt on her. And, you know, Jocelyn was like, listen, I'm down. She was like, we're going to support you. We're going to help you. And of course, Mr. Rory popped up. And he lended his support. He was like, listen, when I'm off duty, we'll come up with a plan or whatever to, you know, to get the proof. And I respect what Trina had to say about it. She was like, you know, as much as she, you know, appreciates their support and them willing to help her, she feels like this is her problem and she got to fix it herself. I respect it. You know what I'm saying? And she felt like she got a good plan to uh, shut Esme down, a good plan to get her to confess. I wonder what she going to do because she need to do something and do it quick. You know, you're going to have to get that girl to slip up majorly. I mean, shit, her mother, a doctor, I mean, get some of that truth serum or something that them people be getting. You know how um, you get that truth drug or whatever and you inject somebody with it or pour it in their drink or whatever and they, they start spilling all their little guts out <laughs> nonstop? Get some of that. You know, that could work. I remember Hayden tried to do that, I think, on Valentine, I think, at one point. I think she tried to do that for Valentine. I think the cups got switched and she was the one that ended up drinking it and telling Finn that she was in love with him or all that mess. Um, I definitely feel like Trina need to do that. Like she need to do something at this point because it ain't looking good. You know, you, you already done lost your case with the school. Then you got the trial coming up. It ain't looking good. She got to do something and do it fast. Um, so anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought about it. And I will see you all later. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. See you all later. Peace.